Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of The Hot Seat, a wireless design and development interview series where we talk about the latest wireless technologies, components, and design issues for the wireless design engineering community. Today we are speaking with Sam Wurzel, the co-founder and CEO for Octopart. Sam likes to build things. In college, he spent alternate summers working in experimental physics labs and bicycle shops. In grad school at Colorado University Boulder, Sam joined a newly formed lab testing the design of a fusion plasma confinement scheme, which one day might be useful in a commercial fusion reactor. Although Sam liked the lab work, he realized academia was not a good fit for him, so he started working on Octopart, eventually left his PhD program in 2006 to move to Berkeley to pursue Octopart full-time. When Sam is not working on Octopart, he enjoys reading while on public transportation and building pens on his mini lathe. Can you provide a brief background of Octopart and explain some of the events that were occurring in the industry that created a need for this kind of search engine? Sure. So back in 2006, um, I was in physics grad school along with my co-founders Andre Moray and Harish Agarwal, and I was studying plasma physics, and Andre was working on laser electronics, uh, studying neutrinos, and Harish was doing biophysics, and um, we were doing a lot of electronics work, uh, buying parts, um, using the websites that were available at that time, and we were we just found ourselves spending way too much time looking for the parts that we needed. Um, we had really big catalogs. The state of the websites of the distributors were was uh, was really at a very basic level, and uh, we had this idea that um, if there was a website which was really easy to find parts, which would help you find parts really easily, then uh, it would save us a ton of time. And uh, we started working on that problem uh, back in 2006. And for the first six months or so. It was just a side project. And so we would work in the lab during the daytime and uh, go home at night and just code all night, go back to the lab, do research. And then the balance between research for grad school and coding for Octopart became more and more skewed in favor of Octopart uh, because we were having a really good time doing it. It was exciting and uh, it was a really fun project. And um, at the end of 2006, um, we, uh, we applied to White Combinator, which is a uh, seed funding firm uh, based out in, uh, in Mountain View. And uh, we got an interview with them. We told them what we were working on. And they said, uh, they said great, we're going to help you start, start the company. And they made an initial investment. Um, at that time, actually right before that, um, I, I quit grad school. And uh, I wanted to work at Octopart full time. So I was in University of Colorado Boulder. Andre was at, uh, at Berkeley, and so I moved out to California, installed myself on his couch, and uh, we just started programming pretty much 24-7. And uh, soon after that, Andre quit grad school, and uh, we convinced uh, our friend Harish to, to quit grad school, and uh, we were hacking on Octopart full-time um, by uh, early 2007. And we launched the site publicly, in March of 2007. Um, that was an exciting time. Um, we got a bunch of press and we started uh, learning a lot more about the industry and uh, we started getting users and we started getting feedback about the site and everything has been growing and developing since then. Great, and how does the search engine actually work? Is there like, where's the information coming from? Are you guys approaching companies and saying, hey, we have this website and we want to include your products on here? Or are they kind of coming to you or is it a little bit of both? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, at the beginning, so going back to 2007, we really didn't know anybody in the industry and nobody in the industry really knew us. And so at that time, we were being very proactive um, to, to make those connections. And that, that took time. It took time to build those relationships. It took time for us to learn about the industry because we really uh, didn't know uh, we, we didn't know what we didn't know uh, we didn't know a lot about the industry and so um, at that time it was it was a, a learning process it was a process of us going out trying to communicate what we were trying to do um, and I think by 2008 2009 um, and definitely in 2010 we re really um, built those relationships and um, and created those connections with the larger component distributors and some of the larger component manufacturers. Now it's a different story. Um, I think now that we're more well-established, 
Um, we get a lot of inbound requests, uh, requests from smaller distributors, uh, specialty distributors, um, who are interested in listing their parts on Octopart. And um, uh, we have a form on our website where you can, uh, uh, a component distributor can put in their information and, uh, and start a conversation with us about, about getting listed on the site. What makes Octopart unique from competing search engines that offer similar services? And in what ways does Octopart set the bar from them? Yeah, that's a good question too. Um, I think that we approach Octopart from the perspective of engineers because we were uh, engineers, uh, electrical engineers, we were doing electrical engineering before we started working on Octopart. And we wanted a site that would allow for search by parameter. So very early on, we had parametric search capability, which um, a number of our competitors don't have. Um, and we also see Octopart um, in its evolution as really as a platform for uh, making component data open and available. And the mechanism with which we do that is through our API. It, it, what it really lets you do is it lets you build applications on your own website within your own uh, tool, within a spreadsheet to pull, to, to reach into the Octopart database, pull out the data that you need and embed it in your own application. And we see, we see this trend in the industry of, of really interesting web-based tools being developed um, that are allowing engineers to collaborate more effectively um, for, uh, for information to be shared uh, much more widely and more freely. And, and we see Octopart as a platform that can sit below all of those different applications and provide value by uh, providing information about part pricing, about uh, current stocking and availability, uh, data sheets, spec information, um, even things like uh, end of life um, and compliance documentation, application notes. There's a whole wealth of information that surrounds parts and we are that central repository where you can pull in all of those pieces of data and utilize them in lots of different contexts. And those contexts are, they span the entire product development lifecycle. So the way we think about it is, we think about this product development lifecycle where an engineer at a small company or a startup will think of some new device they want to build. It could be um, a new uh, a smart watch. It could be a new s smoke detector. Um, it could be any of these uh, electronics that, that you're seeing popping up. And, and at the engineering phase, really what you want to do is to be able to get lots of inform technical information about the parts you're looking at because you need to make design decisions. And, um, and so our database has a lot of that information. It has data sheets, it has application notes. Um, it has information about where you can purchase in small quantities, which are useful for prototyping and, uh, and engineering. And, and so tools that live in that part of the product development lifecycle are tools like um, Upverter um, and other uh, EDA tools. There's much more established tools, desktop tools, out there, uh, obviously, um, but we're seeing a trend of those uh, those tools becoming more collaborative and uh, moving more towards uh, web-based systems. So, so we see ourselves entering into to those tools at the at the product development part of the lifecycle, but also when prototypes are being built. Um, uh, there's prototyping quantities that are being purchased, but also at, at production levels too because we show um, the pricing at, at price breaks that, um, you know, out to the, to the thousands, tens of thousands of pieces. And, um, and, and so our API is being integrated into tools that are used by purchasers, things like product lifecycle management software, PLM software, or um, enterprise resource, uh, uh, enter enterprise resource planning software, ERP software. Um, and, Pulling in that information is useful at, at those stages as well, and then you get down to, um, you know, after uh, after production happens, then you're in the MRO stage and the uh, maintenance, repair, and operation stage. And, and we we often uh, hear from users who are repairing some ancient device, and they have uh, they they find some chip that's blown out, and they, they put in the part number in Octopart and. Uh, we can tell you about a distributor that might specialize in, in part defined parts, and uh, and so we can service those users as well. So we we, are, we see ourselves as as a as a platform that can be utilized at all 
stages of the life cycle of the product development life cycle. Does Octopart have any kind of mobile applications available to your consumers? So, especially for the engineers who are always traveling from place to place? Um, yeah, so um, we do have an iPhone app. Um, you can uh, just search for Octopart in the, in the iPhone store. Um, there are some Android apps um, that use the Octopart API. Um, and uh, yeah, the API is a great platform for building mobile applications because it speaks the same language as, as the web. It's a, it's a REST API, it's very standard, and it's very straightforward for anybody to build mobile applications on it. Um, we had somebody who built an iPad application, um, and, uh, and uh, that was that's super exciting to us. We love to see um, developers utilizing our API and bringing the doctor experience to all of these different platforms. And can you, real quick, just provide a, um our viewers with some insight what we can expect from Octopart in the upcoming months and years? Sure. Um, so I think that um, if we start looking at trends within the industry um, and we try to look out uh, at how, how the product life cycle is going to look down the road, um, a year down the road, three years down the road, five years down the road, we are seeing this pattern of collaborative tools uh, that are being developed, web-based collaborative tools that are, uh, that are plugging into every point on that, on that product development life cycle. Um, and so I mentioned Upverter as one example. Um, I think another example is uh, Circuit Lab. They do uh, circuit stimulation software in the browser. Um, and there's, uh, there's just a, a myriad of tools. Circuits.io is doing um, EDA software in the browser. Um, I think that um, I think that there's a lot of interest in that space because um, if you take if you take a lesson from what's happening in the software development world, you're seeing sites like GitHub become wildly successful because they really allow um, they really nail the collaboration aspect of open source software, and I think that we're starting to see some interesting things happening in the open source hardware world. Um, where, um, where the tools that, that are leading the way in, in open source software have, have also become um, the, the preferred tools in the, in the enterprise space as well and in, uh, uh, and in commercial software. Um, uh, lots of companies use GitHub for their internal uh, software development and um, I can see uh, an analog happening in the, in the hardware design space. So we're really focused on those types of applications. Um, we're always keeping our eye out for them and we're making sure that, um, that we're providing the right services in our API that it's gonna make sense for, for those types of applications to utilize the Octopart API. Um, I think also there are some tools that we, um, we wanna build ourselves. Um, we recently launched a, Bill of Materials Manager tool, uh, our BOM tool, and that allows you to do, uh, you can copy and paste a whole list of parts into the search bar on Octopart. And even though it looks like you can only put one part in, if you click on the little plus sign, you'll see that you can add in multiple parts, or you could just paste in a list of parts right into that, into that search bar, and then the search results you see are a whole list of parts you can see um, what the pricing is at the different quantities that you specify. You can see what the total cost of the bomb is and you can adjust the, the, the number of, of pieces you're making and see the, the numbers updated in real time in terms of the total cost. I think that these are, are tools that um, are, are natural uh, progressions um, from what we do right now because people are already uh, sitting with, with one browser window open and the other window is an Excel spreadsheet. And Excel spreadsheets, I really don't think are the optimal way to be, uh, to be managing parts lists within an organization. And, uh, and so we're thinking about, um, about ways to, uh, to, build, to build better tools for people to get their job done, their jobs done more effectively and more efficiently. Ultimately, those are the tools that we wished we had when we were doing electrical engineering and uh, we really, we really enjoy, uh, enjoy building them for other folks.
Well, those are all the questions that I have for you today, Sam. Is there anything else that you can think of that you might want to add to our discussion that you believe is important for our viewers to know, especially with Octopart? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that there's, um, there's, there's two things. Um, one is uh, we, really, uh, we really love hearing feedback from Octopart users. Um, and if you have any, any questions or comments, um, It'd be great if uh, you send us an email, uh, email us at contact at octobar.com. But what I really want to make a mention of is that we are hiring and uh, we're interested in, uh, in talking to folks who um, have really strong uh, front end development skills, uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, um, but also have a, a real interest and enthusiasm about hardware and electronics. And I think. Um, Finding the intersection of those individuals is, is really interesting because I think that we're at a really exciting time in the in the history of the of the internet, let's say, and of the web, where um, the tools are all coming together, uh, and the, the languages and the software and the browsers are coming together. Where there's huge opportunities to build really interesting, useful uh, software on top of uh, on top of the Octopart API and, and on top of the this massive Parts database that, that we have. And so, if that's something that um, you think might be interesting, uh, please send me an email. Uh, you can reach me at, at sam at octopart.com. I'd like to thank you, Sam, for joining us today and providing us with information on the Octopart search engine for electronic parts for WDD. I'm Megan Zima, and I'll see you next time in the hot seat.